All right, and without further ado, I'll, are you all ready for Super Mario 3D Land? <laughs> I know that I am. Take it away, Zelda Cube. Oh, hello. My name is Zelda Cube, and this is Super Mario 3D Land. Uh, all right, my name is Cosmic, also commentating. I'm Supersonic. Jarvitz. Right, something important to note is that right away, I'm just exiting to the home menu. That's going to reduce the amount of tired messages. About every 30 minutes, there's a message that says, take a break, um, you, you feel tired. First of all, the game should not question my life decisions. <laughs> and, uh, but second of all, by exiting to the home menu, uh, we can see that less. All right, are we ready to get started? Yeah. All right. All right, three, two, one, go. All right. All right, so almost immediately, you're going to see the deep lore that Super Mario 3D Land has. Uh, yeah, Cosmic will uh, explain more about that later. Between but every world, there's these little postcards you get, and let me tell you, this game has the best lore since the very first Super Mario Bros. You might be thinking that game has no lore, but you need to go read the instruction manual. And also, you can't see these cutscenes in 3D, but they can be seen in 3D if you're actually playing the game. So, you know, just... Look at that movement. <laughs> Mario's not wearing it yet, but immediately in 1-1, Zelda Cube's going to pick up a Tanuki leaf. Those are the leaves you saw blow off the tree in the opening cutscene, and that power-up is incredibly broken. He wants to keep it through the entire run. All right, so right away I had the first or second optimization. I used the touch screen to select the level. For some reason, that saves time. Right here, I'm going to release run when getting to the block. Um, when you release run, it usually gives you like the speed that you had out of the previous jump. It's kind right. of interesting. It's it's called hyperspeed, and yeah, for whatever reason, if you don't hold run when you land, you can retain the speed that you had midair. You'll see that used a lot more later, because there's, there's some weird mechanics in this game. Like, if you crouch right as you go off a ledge, you'll get a little speed boost, and if you move sideways midair, you'll, get, you'll pick up extra speed. So, right there at the end of 1-1, unfortunately, I got a long jump, but I was trying to do an optimization called a crouch strat. Uh, you'll see what that looks like in 1-2, hopefully. Mario goes fast. Oh, great. That was the one thing I didn't want to happen. <laughs> it, That's it, what I said in my run in 1-2. It seems like kind of random whenever that happens. Like, I'm not even joking. I don't know when that or why that happens. He's trying to set up this um, crouch boost that he just mentioned. It's pretty tight to set up. That's why he said, hopefully I get it. But once he gets it, you'll see. He was trying to crouch off that ledge, which picks up a little bit of speed. He'll probably use it throughout the rest of this level at some point. Oh, this is great. And you see him twirling around. Yeah. Right there, he got a little bit of a crouch boost. That, that'll be used throughout the run to just save seconds here and there. Right there, I was trying to do a long jump. And uh, <laughs> for those of you all getting scared, <laughs> uh, this is warpless. So uh, yeah, I went up there kind of as a joke, sort of signifying that I forgot <laughs> that I was running warpless. Because that's where I reset the most often. <laughs> Um, a lot of times, one of the most common questions I get when I'm running this game is, what's that move called when you, Mario spins around? And um, There's not really official names for any of this stuff, but we usually just call it a twirl jump. Um, there's regular long jumps, and then there's those twirl jumps, and they move slightly faster than regular long jumps. But you can't start fluttering out of them. That's the main reason the Tanuki suit is really good, because you can f flutter, and Mario doesn't lose height very quickly, so you can just jump over huge gaps. So this run has not been great so far, but hopefully I can save that in 1-3. There's a pretty cool skip in this level. He's going to use some of that hyperspeed we mentioned earlier. Hopefully he can get pull it off. Cool. 
Nice, nicely done. You can't normally make it nearly all the way across that gap without getting the hyperspeed. <clears throat> and you'll see him collecting the star medals. Um, it's not a 100% run, so you might be wondering why. And it's because you actually need them to unlock some of the levels. The last level, for instance, you need 100 star medals to open. And in the any percent category, you take warps, so you don't pass by as many star medals. But in warpless, it's nice because you get um, you get to make more decisions as to which star medals are worth picking up. There's barely over a hundred in the any percent route. One reason I love this game is it's it's kind of like Mario 64, where I feel like there's just a lot of unique situations in each different level. Um, there's a lot of really small, minor optimizations and just really good movement overall. Shoutouts to the Mario 64 run later in the marathon, by the way. Yeah. Uh, something pretty cool about this jump is that I'm not even changing direction, but it'll naturally move Mario further to the right. It's almost like there's an invisible force pushing Mario in that direction. And watch what happens to Bowser right here. He turns into a Goomba. Pay attention to the Super Mario Bros. Warpless run tomorrow. You might see the same thing. They brought back that lore in this game. That's why I love it. Might. <laughs> Hopefully. I mean, I hope somebody, you know, kills Bowser. And that's World 1. Get another postcard. A lot, of, a lot of references from the older Mario games as well. I heard um, someone was playing this game for the first time recently, and their favorite thing was that it sort of captured their favorite parts from Super Mario Bros. 3 and Mario Galaxy and kind of morphed them into this game. Here, I'm going to use a telescope to make Toad drop a coin. And after he bounces up to where this coin is, he's going to do a jump over here. You can see how good the Tanuki suit is. This is one of my favorite levels because there's just so many different routes you can take through it and still do it relatively quickly. Mm -hmm. So the main gimmick of 2-2 is that you're supposed to step on these tiles, and it makes a bunch of tiles spawn after that. Um, but we're not going to do that. That's too slow. And a, a lot of the more modern Mario games, the wall jump mechanics are really intuitive. But for some reason in this game, they're really hard to do properly. So this skip is way harder than it looks. Nice, that was amazing. If he would have touched that purple liquid, it would have caused him to die. So <coughs> it's good doing that flutter jump. And more importantly, by the time loss, he would have to go get another Tanuki suit somewhere, which would right. lose even more time. He saw him take damage in 1-2, and he Im immediately paused and exited. The Tanuki suit is so good that it's faster to just do whatever you need to to get one back. All right, and we're going into our next mystery box. I wonder what's inside. One thing that a lot of runners like to do is try and see how many backwards long jumps they can get in these mystery boxes. It's a fun challenge. All right, this next level is based off of a video game series, or an older video game series. See if you can figure out which one. 
Gee, I wonder. We are going to do that hyper speed technique again. Yeah, right there you can see how if you move sideways in the air in this game, for some reason you pick up a ton of speed. And then these propeller blocks are in a few of the levels and they let you do a lot of cool skips too. It's faster to uh, take damage off of the Goomba and do twirl jumps to the box than it is to um, just uh, long jump to the box as Mario. Another thing that's important to mention is that while it may not seem like it, uh, the star conserves momentum, and that's useful in a lot of individual level runs. So where did that star come from? Because you obviously got it after you took damage. It was damage, just but... lying there. Yeah, okay. it's just on the ground. There's another one just sitting there on the ground in 3-3, for example. Well, that just shows I'm blind. <laughs> Gonna bounce off the B. Gotta plan all your jumps out carefully Ooh. in this level. Accidentally got a crouch strat there. <laughs> Accidentally went too fast. That messed up the cycles for the rest of the platforms, but I managed to uh, adjust. Right. <coughs> this next level has the hardest jump in the run. Yeah, it's, it's really hard. I'll let it speak for itself, and then we'll explain kind of what's going on afterwards. Normally, auto scrollers are every speedrunner's nightmare, but in this game, they're actually some of the coolest levels because you can go ahead of the auto scroller. There's certain levels in this game that you can play completely blind. You just have to play it with audio and figure out where you're going. Right. The hitboxes on these guys are really bad. Uh, there was a speedrunner by the name of Game Stabled who was doing a run for another marathon. And he was on world record pace up until the hitboxes. When he jumped on their head for the final time, um, oh, yep, see, bad <laughs> hitboxes. But he, he jumped on their head on the final time. He, he jumped on his head, killed the boss, and took damage at the same time. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, <sighs> I get to show off something else because I lost that Tanuki. Right. Uh, there's a there's another speedrunner by the name of Fat Guy Runs, and he would always lose his Tanuki. So he figured out that this mushroom house right here in World Two will always give a Tanuki. Nice bonk. <laughs> Stairs are hard. Bonking manipulates the RNG to get that Tanuki. <laughs> <laughs> it was intended. So it, that would have been better if you had like not said it always gave a Tanuki beforehand. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> this is the second time I've been told to shut up by a 3DS <laughs> runner. I don't know what's going on here. All right, we'll see the first cannon in the run. Um, there's cannons in this game, kind of like Mario 64. And sometimes you can skip them, but in this case, it's useful to use this one to get up to where the star medal is. They're pretty hard to aim, actually. So right there, I go at an angle to break the block and get in quickly. It's always kind of finicky to get out of those things. And another propeller block, which makes going through this level Actually, much faster. I think I'm going to grab this back up. 
part. This is a vertical level where normally you go inside this building and then you have to climb a whole series of platforms, but the propeller block gets you up there immediately. It's one of two vertical levels in this run that I can think of. All right, hopefully here I can get a 390 pipe. Uh, 390 is kind of like, um, basically, it, getting a 390 at the start of this level is kind of what speedrunners dreamed of for years. Uh, that's not happening. <laughs> 84 is good too. Good enough. A lot of swimming going on in this level. You could probably read some donations. All right, we have twenty dollars from a gamer twenty six who says, "For my friend Zelda Cube, good luck on your worthless run. You'll do great." Thanks. We have a twenty dollar anonymous donation. If I was as fast as these runners, I might be able to get through my Steam library. <laughs> You're not the only one. <laughs> We have a $250 donation from Me Conductor, who didn't leave a comment, but thank you so much for that generous donation. So he did a twirl jump to the pipe right there, and there's a lot of these really um, subtle situations in this game that you wouldn't notice unless you see him mess up. So hopefully you don't notice any of them. But um, a lot of times you can just barely get on top of a pipe or up a ledge with a long jump, and sometimes you randomly bonk. I don't know, it's, it's really hard. And if you notice that blue mushroom house, that's a lore house. So, you know, we're skipping that. No Tanuki suits there. Again, that star just sitting on the ground we mentioned earlier. And one really frustrating mechanic in this game is every time you kill an enemy, there's a few frames of lag. Sometimes that'll eat your jumps or whatever button you're trying to press. To be fair, the stars are somewhat difficult to see on this monitor. So. <laughs> Looking at Toad to get him to throw another medal at us. And he did a backwards long jump just to be stylish. <laughs> I had to make up for that bonk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This next level has one of the harder skips in the run, too. Uh, there's going to be a warp box, and there's a star medal that's directly below it. So I need to do a jump to it and adjust Mario's height in midair uh, before collecting the coin. It's uh, the last coin of the level. If he's at the right height, he can just barely be low enough that his tail will grab the star metal, but his head will still touch the warp box that he's going to go into. Nice. nice. There's another airship coming up. I really like that in this game we got to play some 3D airships finally. One thing that's important to mention about this airship is that it's the only airship in the run that is not like a side scroller or auto scroller. Uh, instead, there's a cycle. But the cycle is pretty lenient, so shouldn't mess that up. Just don't get hit by the giant spikes.
Something important to mention is that we're going to be fighting Boom Boom again. Uh, yeah, they went pretty unique when designing the bosses in this game. Right there, I get in the corner because that'll manipulate um, where Boom Boom will be. So that way I can just hit him. Whoa. That was interesting. And now he's gonna jump to the flag, but wait, where are you going? Something important to mention about that coin is that if you die trying to collect it, uh, you'll lose basically the most amount of time you can in this run, game stable. <laughs> That's world three. donations during this cutscene if you want. All right, we have a $600 donation from Zeller. Thank you so much, Zeller. <laughs> it is inspiring to see so many people gather to make this happen. Thank you for yet another great event. Thank you. And we have $20 from Shane and Rainey. I've been watching for years and got my wife to start watching along with our two-week-old daughter. Another hidden propeller block in this level that lets us skip by a bunch of stuff. Shoutouts to J-Dude for that cool tree strat. Ooh. And this is cannonless? It's as hard as this in Mario 64. Barely got up there. Nice. Wait a second. Uh, I forgot the first coin in 4-1. Uh, I think you can get a backup in 4-4? Four, four? Uh, well, if we get a two-coin box here, I don't think that should be a problem. Uh oh, look at that. <laughs> uh, that. One thing to mention is that the me shirt color at the start of the run that you pick will actually manipulate these mystery boxes. So if you're doing warpless and you have a me with a brown shirt color, that one will always be a two queen box. It was a mystery until it wasn't. <laughs> and at any percent you can use a pink or black shirt. A black shirt will give the same box as in this run. A lot of tight platforming in this level. Again, the wall jump mechanic is kind of hard. You have to wall jump possibly the first frame you can you can, not entirely sure. Um, but if you do, Mario will wall jump more to the side. That saves a ton of time throughout this level. You'll notice how he's grabbing the bottom of the flagpole, unlike SMB1, where that's faster. I mean, I guess it's faster on SMB1 too, but not the <laughs> only if you mess with that. Wait, this is the wrong level. Ah, oh, okay, we're good. It's actually really hard to make these platforms appear all the time. I think they just programmed it so there's a sort of zone you have to move into to make them appear, but it's unintuitive a lot of the times. Ooh. Just shy. And there's so many situations, like I said, where you can barely make a jump, and you wouldn't know, because he, he pulls it off most of the time. That, uh, that's fine, because that's, we hit the midway. So that doesn't lose that much time. I'm trying to think of where the next backup is. There was one at that boo, but... It's not worth it. We don't need it. Wahoo! 
four or five is also pretty cool. Yeah, this time the <coughs> the panels that come out when you hit the switches go up instead of sideways. So there's a lot of cool climbing and fluttering with the tanuki. That does unfortunately mean we need them this time. Tanuki also allows us to skip a uh, big majority of them. Like here. And you can barely grab this one and still get in the box. Nice. Nice, that was a great level. <laughs> this next level I'm going to be basically relying entirely on audio. Uh, it's another one of those ship levels, which means we can go ahead to the auto scrollers. This, does, this next level is really hard, or this boss is really hard, because she moves really fast, and I don't know when she's going to be next. stages, so now we can get onto the stages that I actually know how to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and 80% the warps just let you skip most of World 1 and then most of World 4. Five one has an auto scroller in it, yeah. but unfortunately, it's not just the screen scrolling. You actually ride an elevator up for a really long time, and we can't move ahead of that one in any way. Or can we? Maybe. Haven't found it yet. Bounce off the thwomp's tail to grab that star metal faster. Cool strat. If you want, you can read donations during this auto scroller. Okay, excellent. We have $25 from Long Way Down 42 who says, Gotta get a donation in during Super Mario 3D Land, the game I've been playing while I've been watching the marathon. Plus, I gotta get a chance at that Ganon statue. Thank you so much. We have a $30 anonymous donation who says, Oh wow, I can't believe I get to watch Cuphead, Hat in Time, and Celeste runs tonight. Good luck to all the runners, and good luck to Zelda Cubed for this awesome 3D land run. You can do another. All right, we have a $1,000 donation from Vlad18. <laughs> he sends in this very nice poem. Roses are red, violets are blue, 
I love everyone at SGDQ. Aww. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so coming up is Fire 2, which is the Zelda level. Like, there's one star coin you get by lighting a bunch of torches and stuff like that. And a little bit of history on the speedrunning of 3D Land. Uh, back in 2012, Pokey, who found Pokey Escape in OOT, or at least named it, um, and Cosmic, and some other people, such as myself at some points, uh, QWERTY, Gamestable, who was mentioned before, used to always race 5 2 Warpless which was kind of like the start of speedrunning this game because nobody actually ever did it. So just a bunch of Zelda people wanting to beat the Zelda level started this, and then some of them uh, started racing it a bit more, uh, doing any percent, and then Zelda Cube came in, and you know from there it just got more optimized. Yeah, originally we didn't want to... We raced 5-2 Warpless because that's before you need any star medals to unlock a level. And for some reason back then, we thought collecting the star medals is lame. We want to just go fast. But a lot of the coolest strats in this game are grabbing the star medals quickly. We have 5-4 coming up next. It's a really um, tight level. like. There's a lot of narrow spaces you have to go through, really easy to bonk. Um, something we haven't mentioned about the Tanuki suit is, along with all of its other strengths, you have the tail, and you can use that to hit enemies out of the way, which is really useful when there's a mole literally blocking your entire path. And you can crouch to fall way faster off ledges. Good hitboxes. It's alright, there's a backup in 5-5. Five five, and it's mostly a propeller level, so... And you can get your revenge on the moles. Remember not to long jump with the propeller block. <laughs> There's the tired message. Because you can flutter out of a long jump with the Tanuki suit, you can long jump with the propeller block and then make the propeller action happen. But it doesn't work if you don't have the Tanuki suit. So I'm usually used to doing long jumps and doing like a box flutter out of that. Uh, but unfortunately, okay, saved it. Uh, if you don't have the Tanuki suit, you can't do those long jumps into the flutter, so I'm kind of improvising here. All right, now we can go fast. I think it's yeah. this one. Oh, nope, you never You have mind. to kill both. Oh, you do? Yeah. And here's one of the coolest jumps in the game. We'll get this to make up for all the bad gameplay so far. Right through oh, the never mind. Oh, <laughs> now he got it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, because I can do it here. Pick up all that speed again, and right to the flagpole. <laughs> it's okay, the strats in World 6 are cooler anyway than the strats in World 5, so as long as I get those. <laughs> Here's the first level you need star medals to unlock. 56 is plenty. But by the end of the run, he does need 100, so we need 44 more. Quick math. It's kind of funny, because most of the time, if you make a mistake in 3D land, it's like a big mistake. 
but all the mistakes I've made in three like are small mistakes, like not resulting in a death. So um, Yeah, good clean deathless run so far. Let's hope it stays that way. Try to get a big bounce off that game or that whatever enemy that was. It doesn't okay. matter because I have to wait for that thwomp anyway. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying it doesn't matter what the enemy is called. <laughs> Again, this is mostly cycle based to get onto those platforms, so it doesn't really matter how I play throughout this level. Later, Bowser. Well, that was close. <laughs> Again, not the real Bowser. Check this lore out. Something to no note is that in the first postcard, it basically shows Bowser giving each enemy a Tanuki and then sending, sending them off to the different worlds. Um, I think the idea behind it is that the Tanuki leaf transforms the enemies into the different Bowsers. So why don't they transform Mario into a giant Bowser? Because Tanuki Mario is better than giant Bowser Mario. Tell that to the Odyssey players. <laughs> I was thinking that. <laughs> we have a $50 donation from Two Loaves of Bread. Those airships are the most fun looking auto scrollers I've ever seen. Keep up the awesome run, Zelda Cube. Thanks. Peach fighting back a little bit. <laughs> All right. Six one is another one of those levels that's pretty cool. Uh, for the, n not for the most part, but the ending of it's cool. There's uh, a lot of complex inputs to do while uh, on the stock. It's uh, kind of hard to get them all. And this is one of those situations where your tail hits an enemy and it, the game makes a few frames of lag and you miss your jumps. <clears throat> All right. Still the cube's too good to miss his jumps though. <laughs> Thanks, Cosmo. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wait a second, that's gonna put me before the cutscene. More, more time for donations. <laughs> wow. More time for donations. There's a thing called commentator's curse. <laughs> It wasn't me this time. <laughs> That's okay. I wanted to make sure we got this donation in there. We have a $10 donation from We Have a $10 Donation, which says We Have a $10 Donation from We Have a $10 Donation that says $10. Thank you. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Wait. I feel like he repeated that comment. And is he repeating this level? It was fate. <laughs> Funny enough, uh, the current warpless record on speedrun.com is actually pretty good. I know it's kind of a surprise considering how I'm playing, but um, the current warpless record actually, um, the only, well, we're not getting fish bounce. Uh, the only mistake it makes is that it replays, so I got to the end of 8-1, and I died at the end, and I saw a free set, and I had to watch the cutscene twice. So the run is good, except for like a four minute time loss right there. Six dash two, the level of spiky death traps. I love spiky death traps. I'm not surprised. It's really hard, but you can get on top of that elevator before it starts moving up. When I found that strat, I was so excited because that was one of the first strats I found in this game. So I wanted to call it, like I was really excited to come up with a name for it. And then 
I made a typo when naming the trick. So from now on, it's known as Elevator Sip. <laughs> that trick doesn't save that much time anyway. Sick Dash 3 has multiple rooms to go into. It's one of those tricky ghost houses where you have to find the right exit. But we know the right way, and most of the other rooms are just used for getting star medals, which it's pretty slow to go and get those ones. So we don't need to. It always seems like when doing these casually, you always pick the correct way last anyway. So I don't know. It's not like it's annoying at all. Hey, level went well. I was waiting for you to bonk there. <laughs> yeah, no more saying things are going well until after it's done. All right, this level actually has the hardest, like, or, well, not the mystery box, but the level after that is actually one of the hardest strats in the game. So much so that speedrunners like Cool can't do it. Um, so basically, it's called Red Cycle. Um, at the end of the level, if I go fast enough, I can do a long jump off of the red platform. Um, and I can also, but it's kind of difficult to get there, because uh, I have to do another precise jump along the way, as well as getting there at the perfect time, uh, in order to actually be able to do the jump. Oh, he was so close to getting on that. It's one of the hardest things to do in this speedrun is get that cycle. And those enemies right there, if you hit them with your tail, they flip over and then you can bounce off of them. That's really useful later in the run. Kind of funny. The only level that went well in World 6 is like the most boring level, like in the run. <laughs> All right. This next ship level, we actually have to do the auto scroller, so you can read donations if you want. Excellent. We have a $150 donation from Fallastar, who just says, Everybody do the Mario. <laughs> And we have $50 from This Whoops. Is Chris. As someone who isn't great at Mario games, it's always satisfying to see one conquered. Good luck on the rest of the run, and let's get that Pepsi Man incentive met. Well, this run, I'm not conquering this game, so. <laughs> There's a backup Tanuki there. We have $20 from I Eat Band Candy. My husband got me into GDQ in January, and I've been patiently waiting since then for the next one. I work from home, so I can watch most everything live. Your Good. band has... Sorry. Your, <laughs> Go ahead. Your band has candy? Mine only makes those, like, really overpriced subs. <laughs> band candy's good, man. <laughs> uh. Uh, they say good uh. luck to all the runners, and shout out to my husband, Zach. Wait, watching where am I? Donation goes to announcer's choice. He made it somehow. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. It's time to fight this really hard boss again. You'll notice on the second hit, he hits her on the top on her head. That makes a shorter damage animation. But then for the last hit, you want to make sure you hit her with your tail, because then she falls over and dies faster. At the end of the sixth ship, I was really struggling and while jumping off of something to try and save myself. I, I have no idea what, but we're alive. <laughs> Pretty 
perhaps my favorite postcard yet. So yeah, in the last post postcard, Peach escaped from Bowser, but Bowser's recapturing her. All right, this next level is really hard. Uh, I'm gonna need some concentration. It's also pretty long, and it's a water level. Hey, we did it. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> Nice level design. It's like they designed it for us. Thanks, Nintendo. I was trying to do a crouch strat there, but it's kind of precise. You're crazy. Getting that cycle is really hard. I got that crouch strat. Yeah, you're crazy. I didn't even know you could make that. That's insane. <laughs> I figure I'd scare you there, Cosmic. There again, too. <laughs> All right, so these next three levels all have pretty crazy skips. Uh, the first one, basically, it's a giant clock, and you can use the platforms to boost yourself up to another platform, and it allows you to skip the entire interior of the clock. There's a mole in the way. He wants to bounce off his head to grab the star medal. Don't let the mole win again. He hits you in 5-4. Uh, wow. You got him. It's okay. <laughs> he didn't hit the mole, so we're fine. Worth. <laughs> Man. Oh, he respawned. Another one of those jumps that I keep bringing up, how you can just barely make it. And you wouldn't know how precise it is unless you tried. Their try's not bad. It's one of the only like big mistakes in my current 90% record. I'm missing that jump. Level number two, uh, at, at the end of this level, there's supposed to be another auto-scroller. Um, it's not like a side-scrolling auto-scroller, but it is more so you have to ride the platform towards the end, and you can do a bounce off of the Goomba to completely skip it. We like skipping auto-scrollers in this game. So getting ahead of these saw blades is actually like fairly difficult casually because they actually go pretty fast. So just seeing them like platforms not fall at all is actually really impressive. Wow. I'm surprised I managed to save that. Nice. <laughs> this is another one of the seven ship is another one of those levels where I'm going to have to re rely completely on audio. Uh, shout outs to SSR, he's an individual level of this run, or individual level runner of this game. He has literally every record, and he was the first person to do blind seven ship, I believe. Oh.
he did it. Wow. That was really impressive because he got out of position and had to go back for the star medal. And if you're just barely off there, you die. So right here, in this level, it's a little difficult, but you can manipulate Boom Boom to come where you want to. Looks like he's coming. Oh, no. he barely didn't ricochet off that wall. Uh-oh. This boss is hard. It's their most original boss yet. So far, they've only had one or the other, but both? Wow. cutscene before the final world, you can read a few donations for. Excellent. I've got $25 from For the Docs. Great stream for a great cause. Glad I was finally able to catch the stream to donate. Add $50 from Bits the Wolf. The Tanuki upgrade is my favorite from all the Mario series. Loving the run so far. And we have $5 from Zildi. Hey, everyone. Long time watcher, first time donator. There was a comment earlier about how awesome it would be if everyone watching could just donate $5. Well, can't argue with that. It's really hard to not bonk on that pipe. Uh, that might mess up my visual. Okay, we got it. Still got it. You're supposed to shoot a cannon all the way to this platform. So yeah, that's what happened. After getting that coin, I ground pounded off of the edge, and I accidentally soft reset in my Warpless record, and it put me back before that cutscene. And that's like the only major mistake in it. And minor, I mean, mistakes that only cost it about like three seconds at the most. Zelda keeps just too good. Can't even keep up with him when he's watching cutscenes twice. This is my favorite skip in the game. All right. I tried to do camera manipulation to get on that first platform faster, but that, unfortunately that didn't happen. It's really hard because to move the camera, you can move it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. And to do that, you can either touch the touchscreen or use the D-pad. Your hands are a little tied up trying to do all these jumps. It's really hard to get a free finger even to uh, turn the camera while you're playing. Oh yeah, you can. There are skips in this level. <laughs> Eight four is the last level with a major skip. Uh, there's supposed to be, it's supposed to be another one of those levels that's an auto-scroller where you follow these platforms all the way to the end. And you can skip all three parts of the auto-scroller. It's pretty great. Part one. Part two. It's not quite done yet. Uh, 
We're good. Now it's done. <laughs> so. I think I've only gotten one crouch strat in this run, so I'm going to try and make up for that by doing a really cool one in the next level. I don't think even Cosmic knows about this one. Oh, I know. I know how crazy you are. you're about to pull that out. Here I can show off the soft reset mechanic. Uh, that's why I died there. <laughs> it was all planned. <laughs> I have to say, that was pretty crazy. I really enjoyed it. Can you do it again? <laughs> Maybe ten times fairly soon. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not yet. One more level. Oh, I forgot to do the crouch strat that time. It's okay. It doesn't save much time. Four extras. Oops. All right. This is this level has a really cool strat, so I'm hoping I can get it. Uh. Uh oh. My uh my 3DS just did that on its own. Uh, I'm not doing that. A third time's uh, a charm. Uh-oh. This is one of the guys, tougher tricks. You guys have a spare 3DS? Uh, so oh, did it get stuck again? I uh, mean, I was going to go grab mine, but then Cosmic texted me and said we didn't need it, so I kind of didn't get it. Right. It's always my fault. Uh, I mean, you're the one who texted me. I can pull that up right now if you really want me to. Uh, I'll try and fix it. By the way, this is intentional. I lost count, actually. How many deaths am I at? I think that was eight. eight. All right. Yeah. We'll just mess around. One, one more death. Why not? Ten deaths is all we need for this. So by dying here ten times, uh, you get power-ups, and it's actually faster, and it's really lame. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so now for this level, you won't be able to get hit by anything except lava. Um, yeah. And then there's also a P-Wing, which will warp them to the end of a level. But yeah, uh, we thought it was so lame that we came up with an excuse to ban it in 100%. It's not really valid, but it's an excuse. If you beat the game without any of these like bonus power-ups showing up, uh, you get five stars for getting 100%, and then if you don't die more than five times in a level, those stars sort of sparkle on your file select. So that was, that was our way. You, you need those sparkly stars for it to be 100%. So you're saying if you're bad, you can't run 100%? Yes. Well, I guess uh, the, I need to cancel routing that. Oh, I was wrong about being invulnerable to everything. Bowser can still knock you off with this suit. As uh, someone learned the hard way yesterday. No disguise. This must be the real one. All right. Something important to mention is that the Super Mario 64 run in this marathon is 70 star. So I'll show this off to get to get your fix of BLJs. I didn't get a third try like Cosmic did. 
You keep firing shots. Mm -hmm. well, it's easy to fire them, especially since you're on my couch, Jarvitz. Uh, you haven't fired one at me yet, though, unless that counts, but I don't think that was really that good. So you, you oh, might no. have seen that was the last level on the overworld, but surprise, surprise, Peach got kidnapped again. So we have two more levels to play. <laughs> sure I don't do this too early, but it's actually like a second faster to soft reset as soon as it says saving. And that's going to skip a cutscene with Bowser in this half a world eight. All right, this level's pretty cool. I'm hoping I can get all the major strats in it. Okay, here I'm going to try and grab a star metal through the fire. You did it. Invincible tail. Yeah, Mario's tail is really useful for grabbing like star points in this game. So close to that fire pillar. So we're coming up on our last level for real this time. Um, and something important to mention is that there's a skip in this level that basically every runner had tried to come up with a method for, and we all deemed it to be impossible. But then a new runner by the name of Che Dude, um, he holds Super Mario 64 DS any percent record. He came up with a really cool strat that made the large skip possible. So I'm hoping I can get it. And since this is the last level, you'd think we could use the P-Wing, but this level's actually in two parts. So you can only use the P-Wing on one of the two parts. And it was originally used on this part, but it was changed to the other part after um, it was... Someone made a comparison video, and then that strat was found afterwards that made uh -oh. it even more worth it. I wanted to show off the strat, and since I had a bad angle, I knew I had to reset. Yes, go back, show this off. It's that cool. Yeah, it's a really cool strat. I mean, it started off with an auto-scroller. You know something awesome is about to happen. <laughs> yeah, it's really lame. Uh, basically, you get to the end of the game after going, pulling off all these cool strats, at least strats that I tried to pull off, pull off, and then you just skip the final boss fight. This game's insanely hard. It's, it probably doesn't look that way, but it's the hardest game I've ever ran. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Thank you. I'm good at this game, I promise. It's the other castle in World 8 you die ten times on. <laughs> Since they only made really small mistakes, though, up to this point, I don't think I've lost that much time. This is uh, how live marathon runs or races tend to go. That's looking good, I think. Oh, my God. 
the action doesn't stop yet. Now we get to stand still. I didn't know this was happening. Also, rip headphone users. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nice shot. One more nice shot, maybe. You madman. Uh, I don't know, actually. You're crazy. What? No, don't jump off the edge. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time when you hit the very edge of that, uh, what'll happen is uh, is you'll actually get recoil, but then you won't get the animation where he's like landing on the ground. But even though I hit the edge that time, for some reason I didn't get that animation. All right. All that remains in this run is just to use the P-Wing. So time's coming up soon. Yeah. Time happens when I hit the flagpole. <coughs> I hope you'd enjoyed watching this uh, flawless run of Super Mario 3D Land. <laughs> hey, I mean, over half of the deaths were intentional, so. <laughs> so yeah, you just skip Bowser. It's so anticlimactic. People always complaining about easy bosses in Mario. You just touch the touch screen. And time. Before I go, I just want to give a quick shout out to a few people. Shout outs to Storster, he's really pushed me to improve in this game. Shout outs to Kevin, and shout outs to Mark, please. And shout outs to Kevin, the power up audio Yay! guy, too. Woo! <laughs> that guy, too. I got your back, Kevin. <laughs> Thank you. Shout outs to King Boo 97 Oh, yeah, him, too. <laughs> He's uh, the best Mario 3D world runner, at least last time I checked. <laughs> he also plays this game. All right, let's give it up one more time for Zelda Cubed 1. <laughs> Thank you so much for that perfectly imperfect run. We enjoyed every second of it. <laughs> Coming up next, we have Cuphead, run by the Mexican runner. So I know you're all going to want to stick around for that. We have a big crowd here today, and I know that a lot of them are looking forward to that. And we did reach our donation incentive, so that means it's upgraded to 100%. So you're going to see more Cuphead, more coin gathering, more amazing boss battles. And I know the Mexican runner is going to crush it, so that is coming up soon. You are watching Summer Games Quick, Done Quick 2018, powered by Twitch. This is Yellow Killer B, and I'll be hanging out with you for at least one more game. I do have a few more donations I'm going to read here while we're getting set up for Cuphead. We've got $50 from Passion Med 85 it Says, just keep on gaming. Thanks for supporting such an excellent cause. We have $50 from Craig Anderson. I've been watching the GDQ Marathon since 2012, and the runners continue to amaze me to this day. Thanks for the endless hours of entertainment. On to the million. Thanks so much, Greg. Guys, guys, we have an anonymous $25 donation, for, but I have a sneaking suspicion it might be from our, one of our favorite bots out there. It says, you really should listen to the game telling you to take a break especially a water break. Stay hydrated out there. OK, stay hydrated, bot. I know it's you. 
<laughs> we have an anonymous $500 donation that says, <laughs> I could sure go for a Pepsi. <laughs> We've got $20 from RoboZombie. Loving today's lineup and can't wait to see Cuphead played at a high level. We have $30 from Shanzi. Pepsi Man is hilarious. Hope we reach the donation incentive. Would love to see the run. We've, we've got $10 from an anonymous donor. This donation is from my nephew who got into Cuphead and is also a talented artist. Last year we met another talented artist and we're like a family now. I hope we can keep making games forever. Best of luck to all the runners. All right, we're gonna throw it over to one of our sponsors, but we will be right back. All right, we have a $25 donation from Barkeem. Had to donate to get the Boyks on stream, his live streams of Pepsi Man, or what got me into watching speedruns. Save the frames, dodge the cans. <laughs> and of course, we're reading all of these because we do have a Pepsi Man donation incentive coming up for later tonight. It's a bonus game that's coming up. Guys, if you don't know what Pepsi Man is, let me try to explain it to you. Well, actually, why don't you just donate a little less than $20,000, and then you'll get to see for yourself later tonight. But seriously, you won't want to miss this. We're at 27000 We need 45000 to hit that incentive, and I know you guys are going to be able to do it. All right, I'm going to throw you over to the interview desk to Jay Hobbs, who has an interview with the Hat and Time Racers, Flair Bear, and Connor Ace. Take it away, Jay Hobbs. Thanks. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Summer Games Done Quick 2018. My name is Jay Hobbs. I'm joined by Connor Ace and Flair Bear. We're going to be performing a run of Hat in Time, or rather two runs of a Hat in Time, racing head to head. So how are you guys feeling? How are the nerves doing? Coming up pretty soon. I'm feeling pretty good right now. Like, yeah. was a little nervous earlier, but I've gotten over it. Flair, how about you? Yeah, it's been a lot of practice going on since the start of this event, so hopefully I should be fine by now. I've been doing pretty well recently. Awesome. Uh, so, right, gonna get right into it. Who's winning the race? Give me, give me the him. <laughs> <laughs> the respect, not the trash talk. The respect nah. between the. Two. But for real though, it's gonna be a close race. Like both of us are always really close with each other whenever we've done races, and it's usually like one thing that'll decide what happens. Yeah, we've had mixed results in the practice, like races we've had so far. Even if they were close, but like the times have always been really varied. So like if we get a run where we actually like don't have like absurd chokes for once, then it'll be a lot closer than have 
than have been the other attempts. Right. Well, hopefully we get to see a great race. I'm sure it'll be awesome either way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I do want to ask Flair, this is your first time at a GDQ, right? Yes. Uh, how are your nerves doing? You know, you're going to go up on the big stage, but at the same time, it's kind of just another race, right? Uh, how, how are you feeling? They've gone down severely since, like, the time in, like, March when submissions were going on. Like, when, uh, when submissions were going through and I was like, wow, I'm, I'm the best person submitting and this is, like, a really likely game to get in. I was like, oh, my gosh, I might actually be doing this. Because, like, I wasn't in speedrunning for very long by the time that I submitted and I'm, like, already in a GDQ. So it's kind of crazy. But, yeah, over, over those months of, like, not even believing that it happened, it's, like, I've just gotten used to it a bit more by now, so hopefully I'm not nervous for the run. And you're only 18, getting to jump yeah. in, you know, in front of everybody and do the race. That's pretty awesome. Now, Connor, you've done runs at GDQ before. Yeah. How are the nerves comparing this time compared to before, stuff like that? It's a, it's really about the same. Like, this is the biggest run that I've done so far, but feeling about the same. I've got, like, I've gotten pretty used to performing runs for marathons at this point. Okay, cool. Well, I want to jump into some of the social media questions we got because we've got a lot of great questions from people on Twitter. And the first one is perfect for anybody who is no, not familiar with Hat and Time at all. So at Jiverson87 asks, as someone who has never heard of or seen the game before, how would you describe it and what should we be looking forward to during your run? Um, from a perspective of someone who's never seen it, something that you can understand if you've already watched or like played through the game before is a lot of the cool routing is how many of the levels that you like don't do the intended routes for anything on. But if that doesn't make sense to you because you haven't played it before, then the main thing to look out for is the movement. It has like really, really cool like, I guess like Mario like movement. There's like, I don't know, the time rifts are really cool to watch just because it, those in particular are just like big obstacle courses mm -hmm. with like showing off all the movement exploits that we figured out and stuff like that. So yeah, I guess the movement and watching like how we maneuver around things and stuff like that. Cool. Connor, anything to add on that? Uh, not really, but I mean, yeah, the movement is really, really smooth overall. Uh, there's a lot of like really subtle tricks that we'll be like careful to point out so that people who are new to the run will be able to understand what's going on. Well, that's great. And have, now this game has actually shown up at GDQ before, even though it was only recently released. Uh, did either of you run the game in beta? So the beta speed run that was at GDQ, uh, I've never done a run on that build. But there was the speed run preview that they released right before the game came out, and that's what I ran. OK. Yeah. I've, I've seen the, the run. The, I didn't play around at those times either. I started playing immediately after the full release came out. but. I'm, f I'm familiar with that build and how it works, and it's completely different to what it is. Very, now. very different now. So we got the almost the new boy and the old boy, you know, going to be racing here yeah. head to head. <laughs> it should be exciting. All right, well, let's get into our next social media question from at Amerlin. Uh, he asks, Flair and Ace, what skip do you consider the hardest in the current route overall? So hardest in the current route is definitely bag skip, I would say. A uh, very, very precise trick that we use to uh, jump over a cutscene trigger, and it saves about like 30 seconds, oh, wow. I want to say. Uh, but the hardest in the game is definitely the, uh, the quick kill for the Chapter 2 boss. Uh, Flair is more experienced with it than I am, because yeah. so he can talk it's about like, it. It's like, first of all, on, on bag skip, like, uh, even though it's like something that I expect to be more consistent at now, considering that I've put more practice into bag skip than like anything else in the run and still sometimes miss it and reset to it. It's such a brutal thing. It takes the longest for like new runners to start getting used to, but eventually people start picking it up because it is a big time save. And the quick kill that he was talking about, the final boss of the Battle of the Birds world, there's two of them and one of them in particular, because they work in different ways. One of them in particular, there's an out of bounds you can do with the scooter and like, there's barely any people, if any at all, that do it in runs. It's only in the all-time pieces or 100% category. And, yeah, it's, like, definitely the hardest, I would say, the hardest level in the 100% route is that. And you, get, you don't have to worry about that one, right? Because you guys are just doing that. No, yeah. no, we're not so. doing that. <laughs> it's it's specifically relief, huh? for DJ Grooves, which is one of the two bosses, but we fight the conductor instead. And while it isn't as hard, it's still an out-of-bounds trick that we do and is really finicky. Still the hardest like split in the run. 
well, glad that you don't have to worry about that yeah. one. Uh, we got one more social media question we're going to jump into here. At TKFT Guillotine asks, what's the hardest thing about doing a run in a marathon as opposed to in the comfort of your own home? So for me personally, it's really not that much different, I feel like, because you're really just doing a run and talking about it at the same time. So the hardest part is definitely like the initial setup, like really just trying to get everything working, like trying to create your own like environment or recreate your own environment, like on these stream PCs. Yeah, I, I, that's like exactly what I wanted to say. Like for me playing, when I started doing runs while talking, like uh, when I was doing that commentary submissions and everything, I didn't even feel like it made a difference in my play at all. Just because I know enough about the game, it kind of just flows out when I talk about it. It's not really that hard, but this game has like a lot of things going on with like the settings and graphics and stuff like that you have to get used to like if i were playing on my computer at home i use like lowest everything with like some weird graphic settings that make it easier to see like visual cues and stuff but like setting it up on playing on a pc other than your home it feels like everything is different so it's, it's kind of weird so you have to kind of get used to it all right well uh thank you guys for asking for answering rather some questions uh i very excited for this run. I'm excited for this whole block coming up, and I wish you both the best of luck. Thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and throw it over to Scent now to tell us about some prizes for this awesome Cuphead run coming up and the entire indie block tonight. Take it away, Scent. Hey, Habs. Thank you so much for that wonderful interview. Guys, we have a ton of absolutely amazing games coming up tonight, and of course, we have a ton of absolutely amazing prizes uh, to go with them. Uh, you know, so first off here, we have this wonderful a uh, little Celeste mini print, it's absolutely adorable. It's absolutely tiny, I mean, look at it in my hands. Beautiful, make a nice postcard, maybe stick it in a frame somewhere. It'll be absolutely great. Now, coming to you straight from uh, our friends over at Fangamer and from the team at Matt Makes Games, we have a Celeste shirt that I'm going to try to hold the right side up for once. I think I got it. I think it might be two for two with shirts at this event. I'm, yeah. I'm really proud of myself. Yeah, that's what we call improvement. Thank you, guy in the audience who gets that. But seriously, guys, this shirt is absolutely amazing, and it's available in your choice of size thanks to our friends over at Fangamer. Now, Studio MDHR, the guys behind Cuphead, who've done so many wonderful things, have sent us so many wonderful prizes to go along with their amazing game. First off, we have this lovely little collectible devil plush. I mean, I love him. He's cute. He's covered in glitter. I'm not sure if that's intended or not, but I mean, glitter is the devil, so it, ma it makes sense to me. Um, he's going to be a $10 minimum donation. And keep in mind, guys, all of these prizes that you're going to see uh, right now are available from right now, the start of the Cuphead run, all the way until Stiltfella in the wee hours of the morning. So you guys have plenty of time to get those donations in, and man, you really should. Uh, from a good friend of mine, Sam in Buffalo, we have not one, but two Funko Pop figures, Cuphead and his good friend Mugman. They're coming together as a set to you guys because, I mean, come on, these two should really never be separated in their quest to, um, you know, stop dealing with the devil. Guys, don't, don't deal with the devil. Not worth it, I promise. Uh, these two are a uh, $10 uh, minimum donation together. Uh, we also have uh, Legendary Chalice as well as Dice King Funko Pop uh, figures from Studio MDHR, and those are $5 a piece. Studio MDHR, I mean, they just, they kept coming. They sent us uh, this lovely little apparel pack. There's a hat. Uh, there's a couple of shirts in here. Uh, we got one shirt right here featuring Cuphead and Mugman. We got another shirt right here featuring, I mean, you guessed it, Cuphead and Mugman. And uh, we have one more shirt. I'm, I'm going to give anyone a prize who can identify what's going to be on it. Cuphead! Uh, well, that guy probably would have won something if I hadn't already said Cuphead. No Mugman, though. Gotcha with that one. They also sent us uh, this absolutely lovely fleece throw blanket featuring Cuphead and Mugman. I'm sensing a theme here, and it's a theme I like, let me tell you. The apparel package also contains socks and a hat, by the way. So, I mean, if anyone needs socks, we got socks. I'm good on them. Now, I showed it off a little bit earlier, and I'm going to push this all over to the side here. Chompy, I'm, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm going to have to move you off the table. Go, go take that sabbatical. Work on your, uh, work on your memoir. See you later. To show off this, uh, this absolutely amazing shadow box, uh, courtesy of MDHR and Ardo Vision, this thing, is, this thing is just sick. I mean, it is a little bit hard to see on camera, but it is fully 3D, multiple layers of, um, of paper on there, and it's just accurately depicting that. It's, it's just so sick. It's a, and it's only a $20 minimum donation, guys. This is one of a kind. I think only two of them have ever been made, so 
Like, come on. And it even actually on the back comes with a little certificate of authenticity from Artivision and Studio MDHR. So, I mean, this is the real deal right here. And finally, guys, I got something that's just, just absolutely special and it's, it's so incredibly near and dear to my heart. Um, Studio MDHR went above and beyond and they sent us not one, but two original animation cells from Cuphead. Yeah, there we go. The audience, the audience knows how impressive this is. They love it. Guys, if you don't know, Studio MDHR, they were super dedicated to the craft. They went back and they animated the game like you would in, you know, a ye olde 1930s, 1940s cartoon. These are the animation cells they used to, you know, like, pipe into the game. Um, I mean, these are one of a kind. You're genuinely not going to be able to find these anywhere else. It's a $30 minimum donation for the two of them. Uh, like I mentioned, it is from now until the end of Stiltfella. You want to get your donations in for that. We also have an absolutely amazing Cuphead vinyl soundtrack from our good friends over at I Am 8-Bit. Um, check the tracker for a picture of that one. It's, it's going to blow your mind. The packaging is amazing. And you know, keep in mind, guys, all of these prizes, you get your donations in for them. You're getting your donations in for our grand prize, $150, cumulative throughout the event. You're going to get yourself an Xbox One X. You're going to get yourself a PS4 Pro. You're going to get yourself a Nintendo Switch. You're going to get yourself an amazing amazing gaming PC. It's all together in one package. Um, but as always, if you need more images of these things, uh, if you just want to see what great prizes are coming up, what great runs are coming up, what great incentives are coming up, you can uh, put these prize donations towards. Uh, by the way, I think uh, Pepsi Man is still like a good 15,000 away from its goal. You guys want to see Pepsi Man, right? Make some noise for Pepsi Man real quick. That's what I like to hear. Guys, we all want to see Pepsi Man, you want to see Pepsi Man, but right now, you want to see TMR absolutely demolish Cuphead. So let's throw it back up to the front as we get ready for that run. All right, thank you so much, Sense. We are getting set up for Cuphead. I know you're all excited about that, but first, we have a $3,000 donation from Henry47. And he just says, Pepsi Man! <laughs> Sorry, headphone users. <laughs> we also have $70 from Mary Merkel. This is a very special donation because it's a shout out to our grandson, Cool Maddie, and to everyone who has worked so hard to make all of this possible. So proud of everyone involved. Thank you so much, Mary. <laughs> We have $15 from Remy Jet. Without a delicious beverage, Cuphead is merely an empty container. Sad face. Let's get that Pepsi Man incentive met. We've got $25 from Teddy18. Cuphead's, Cuphead's head is filled with Pepsi. He would want this run to happen. We've got $128 from Niet117 who just says, we need Pepsi Man. We've got $23 from Murray. Hi, everyone at SGDQ. Here's $23 towards 2.3 million. Thank you. We have $200 from Anonymous, who just says, kittens. We have $25 from Mr. Lavalee. I've been talking to my students about this for months. Hopefully at least one of them will hear this and follow suit with the donations. Thank you to AGDQ runners and staff for raising the bar for what can be accomplished with video games. We've got $150 from Sanashi, who just says, Petsy Man, hype! <laughs> We've got $50 from Unisverse. Thrilled to see Cuphead being played for such a great cause. Had to try to get in on those amazing prizes. Everything about this game makes me happy as an animation student, and seeing it break is even greater.
We have $50 from DashaQ. Had to donate during Cuphead. From the first minute I played this game, I never wanted to stop. Everything about this game, from the catchy music, the clever and challenging boss fights, to the aesthetic art style, 